In this section, we're going to be discussing some of the key elements which go together to make up VBA code. And we'll start with something which is quite an important concept. An object is a collection of code which enables you as a programmer to replicate the kind of interaction with Excel that you can make as a user. So as a user, your first interaction is with Excel itself. And here, you might go to File and choose Options. You've got access to Excel's general settings. So you're not working on a specific workbook, you're just setting parameters which will apply throughout your work within Excel. In the Excel object model, the application object represents Excel itself. Next we have workbooks. So I can go to an existing workbook. Here I'm going to go into the second section, the second folder within our training folder, 02, key elements of VBA code. And then I'll open up 01, the Excel object model. So now I have a workbook open. And of course I could also create new workbooks. So file new and a blank workbook. So I now have two workbooks open within Excel. In the Excel object model, the workbooks collection is the workbooks that you have open within Excel. When I want to do any work in Excel, I need to focus on a specific workbook. So I go from the workbooks collection to the workbook object. So within the workbooks collection, I focus on a particular workbook. And then within that workbook, I have a series of other objects available to me. Probably the most important of these objects is the worksheets collection. And that's the worksheets that I have within the workbook. So this example workbook just has two worksheets. As well as the worksheets collection, there's also the sheets collection. As you know, as well as worksheets, you can have chart sheets. So if I right click and choose insert, and then choose a chart, I now have a perfectly meaningless chart sheet. But just to illustrate that as well as worksheets, you can have chart sheets. So the sheets collection includes both worksheets and chart sheets. Whereas, of course, the worksheets collection includes worksheets only. If I need to do some data entry, I'm going to focus on a particular worksheet. So within the sheets or worksheets collection, I now focus on a particular worksheet. Within the worksheet, I then have an infinity of cell ranges every available combination. And each of these possible combinations is usually referred to as a range object. Once we've homed in on a particular range within the worksheet, we will typically want to do something to them. We might want to read a value from a cell, we might want to change the format on a range of cells and so forth or we might want to just enter some data in a single cell. So here I might type in a quantity and then press tab to move along to the description and so forth. The entry that you put into a cell or cells is referred to as the value. So let's just retrace our steps. We start with the application which is Excel itself we look inside the collection of workbooks which are currently open. We home in on a particular workbook. And then within that workbook, we examine the worksheets collection. We home in on a particular worksheet. We navigate to a particular range, in this case a single cell. And we then modify the value within that cell. So let's now delete this quantity and let's now have a look at the VBA syntax for doing this programmatically. 
So we get across to Developer, click on Visual Basic, or simply press Alt F11. I'm also going to close down the unwanted blank workbook that I created. So now I only have one project open, which makes life a little less confusing. And I'm also going to delete the chart sheet, which I didn't really need. So let's just right click and delete. So the first thing we'll need in order to create a macro is a module. So insert module. And I'm just going to rename it just to remind you that you can. And let's just call it Object Model Basics. Now I need the macro itself. And I can either just type the code or I can click in the code window and go to Insert Procedure. And let's call the procedure Insert Data. And as you probably remember, no spaces are allowed. So there's my blank macro. And let's now think about navigation. So we had application. And then the next step is to get to the workbooks collection and specify the workbook that we want to work on. We then type a dot. So the dot can be viewed in this context as a drill down character. So you're saying look inside Excel and then find one of the objects inside it. And in this case, we're after workbooks. And then in brackets, we can type the name of the workbook. So the workbook has this long name here. However, we do have an alternative. We can also say application dot. And you'll see that one of the properties, one of the elements inside the application object is this workbook. And this syntax is used to refer to the workbook which contains the macro itself. So this is a lot more convenient for our purposes. As you type, you'll see that Excel displays all of the elements that are members of the object that you're currently working on. So the dot automatically brings up all of the possible syntax that you can use at this point in time in a very similar fashion to when you're typing functions. In a very similar fashion to when you're typing functions within a formula. Once Excel displays the one that you want, you simply press the tab key to enter it into your code. So we've now specified a workbook. Within this workbook, we now want to drill down inside the worksheets collection and home in on the correct worksheet. So the worksheet that we're interested in is called Invoice Form. It's also the first sheet within the workbook. So we can do two things. We first of all mention the collection. And to do that we put dot worksheets. And again just press tab when Excel displays it in the list. And then in parentheses we can do one of two things. Because it's the first worksheet we can type a 1. Obviously this could change very easily. If someone were to insert an extra worksheet in front of it, it would become worksheet 2. So perhaps a better approach is to use the name invoice form. And because it's text, it has to go in double quotes. Having specified the worksheet, we now want to drill down and specify the range. And the range we're interested in is cell A15. So to specify this cell, we use the syntax dot range brackets quotes A15. And then finally, we want to change the value within that cell. And the syntax for doing this is dot value equals and then the value that you want to appear in the cell. If it's numeric you can simply put it without quotes. If it's text then obviously it needs to go inside quotes. 
So let's say we want the number 2, which will be the quantity. So that will give us the quantity and then the description, as you can see, is B15. Here we've got three merged cells, so the unit price becomes E15 as opposed to C15. So back in our code, we can now simply copy this and change the letter. So this will become a B and this will become an E. The description will be text, so it has to go in double quotes. And then our price. And there we have it. So that's a very brief introduction to what's called dot syntax. And this is the syntax that you use to navigate your way through the Excel object model. Let's just test our code, making sure that the cursor is somewhere within the macro. We just click on the Run button. And then when we go back to the worksheet, we can see that we've got our three values entered. And of course, the formula then works out the result. So that's an intro to the first part of the puzzle, which is the Excel object model. In the next video, we'll take our first look at the VBA equivalent. And the difference is, of course, there's no interface which gives you access to VBA. It is purely a programmatic model, whereas obviously with Excel you have visual UI that uh, you can actually work with. So that's coming up next.